Welcome to Monet Cafe, artistic friends and visitors. I'm artist Susan Jenkins, and I hope you'll enjoy this presentation on drawing and painting trees the Fibonacci way. Hello and welcome to Monet Cafe. I'm artist Susan Jenkins, and today I'm bringing you a special request video. One of my patrons, hi Andrea, had a request for me to slow down a technique I recently did on drawing trees and tree branches with a, a pressure technique that I used. And I thought this is an excellent opportunity for me to teach on something else that I've been wanting to bring to you guys for a while. It has to do with how trees grow and the Fibonacci sequence. And if you've never heard of that term before, I have another whole video on it where I talk about the Fibonacci sequence and the golden ratio. It's kind of the same thing. And also too, I'll try to remember to put a little uh, clickable link up at the top so you can refer to that later. But I am always fascinated as an artist. I don't wanna just paint. I, I always say, I love to know why things work the way they work. So I, I am, and I know if you're an artist, we are students of nature. I love the way math and science work with art. So that's what I'm going to do today. I'm, I'm going to share for Andrea the technique of uh, using pressure to create a more gestural quality for drawing trees and tree branches. But I'm also going to share how you can understand more about the growth of trees, which will make your art even better. Oh, and also, once again, I'm wearing one of the Love and Faith t-shirts. And I love this company. I love the hopeful messages. And I always have a clickable link in the description sections if you see me wearing one of these t-shirts with a 20% off coupon code. So check it out. They have all kinds of great t-shirts. All right, now we can get started. First, I will go ahead and demonstrate the technique that was also in another video of mine on 12 different uh, techniques for pastel painting. Once again, I'll try to put a clickable link there. One of them had to do with pressure. And I find that I use this technique often when I want things to look gestural and it just looks so much more artistic, I think. So let me, um, since we're doing trees, let me just grab kind of a, well, I'll grab this nice kind of burgundy purplish color. In this demonstration, I'm just using my set that I use often. It's Unison 120 half stick set. It's a great set for beginners. Sorry for my easel shaking. And I'm also using just a regular piece of drawing paper. But I'm very quickly right here just showing you how um, we can use these gestural uh, strokes that vary in pressure and also kind of a twisting motion to change the width of the branches. So once you get the hang of it, it's really easy, you know, but it's like anything, you have to practice it. Now join me as I show you some tips on what to do and what not to do. In this example, I will describe a bit more about what not to do. We have a tendency with trees to um, make things a bit too curvy or rounded. So I'm, I'm going to talk about the pressure technique and the angular technique kind of at the same time. So first let's just, uh, and there's a difference between painting and drawing. So I'm first just gonna kind of draw a tree with um, um, kind of, I have to force myself to do it non-pressured um, because I have such a tendency <laughs> and to do it curvy because I have a tendency not to do it that way. All right, so here we're getting a tree going and I'm kind of, whoops, I'm kind of just drawing it in and I'm trying to purposely create curvy lines, okay, rather than angular lines. And notice my pressure, that's one of the points of this, is all about the same. All right, so this is kind of how we don't want to draw a tree. You get the idea. I'm, I'm trying really hard to make curvy, curvy lines. It's tough, you know, it's tough to do it the right way when you haven't done it before. And it's kind of tough sometimes to do it the wrong way <laughs> when you've been doing it the other way. I'm not saying my way is right, but it's just a technique. All right, so now that's more of a tree kind of drawn in with some curvy lines. And we're gonna to get to the Fibonacci sequence later. I, I don't, 
I can get kind of close with it, but I'll, you'll know more about what I mean by that pretty soon. All right, so now for this other tree, let me give you an example. Let me write here. This one had um, uh, pressure, consistent pressure. Okay, so that's what we don't want to do. All right, so now for this next one, I'm going to vary the pressure and I'm going to have more angular strokes. So on this one, rather than drawing it in, this is more of an example of drawing. And with pastels, a questions often ask us, why is pastel painting considered painting when it's like a dry medium, you know, like uh, pastel pencils or, or charcoal or whatever. And it really has to do with the coverage and the way that we use the tool. So when you use pastels more to cover your surface more, um, rather than just sketching or drawing, you're painting. So we often use the sides of the pastel. So this is where um, my technique that I used in my last video of varying the pressure is going to come in. So notice with this tree, I'm not only going to vary the pressure, I'm going to be pushing hard and then letting up, pushing hard and then letting up. I'm also going to be using angular strokes rather than curvy strokes, what I had a hard time actually even doing here. Okay, but it does, it really does make a difference. So I'm going to use the side of the pastel here. I'm going to come up kind of like for the base of the tree with a decent pressure. I'm going to kind of angle. I'm releasing pressure, angling again. And then there's usually always a main part of the tree trunk and then one that kind of branches off. And I'm also using um, the twisting technique. You see how I'm kind of twisting the pastel? and I'm releasing pressure, and then I'll take one up here like this. I'm twisting it to get different widths of the, of the pastel. The whole width was right here. So by twisting it, I can vary the different widths. Now I want to, again, get more angular strokes rather than um, rounded strokes. So I got a kitty cat at my feet right now, <laughs> scratching my foot. So you can probably see pretty quickly um, the difference in the two. Also, when we get up to the upper branches is when we can really start doing that pressure technique. It also works quite well for grasses. I'll do a few grasses, okay? So notice how I'm kind of angling things and varying my pressure and twisting, all right? So there's definitely a difference of uh, pressure. Let me write that one down real quick. This one's going to be very pressure. I'm sorry if my shoulder's getting in the way. And angular. Okay, so I realize this one is wrong. <laughs> now I'm going to try to reach around my camera a little bit and show you the same thing kind of works with grasses. Let me, um, let me bring it down just a bit here. So let's do the wrong example here. Uh, I'm just going to get kind of a uh, well, let me get let me get kind of some darks down. I can't help it. I'm gonna get like some dark roots down here. I'll do the same thing in both examples. This is like um, like the deepest parts of the grasses. Okay. Now, what what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the wrong technique over here. Let me just get a green that you can see pretty good, probably like this one. And I see people doing grasses like this. Have you ever seen that before? Uh, really keeping all of the blades of grass is the same pressure and the same width. Um, I could have put varying widths up here, but I kind of did that to both. I'm going to talk about the Fibonacci sequence in a minute. And um, so it's the same pressure, the same width, and the same little curvy, curvy motions, you know. And that just is not the way that grass grows. So my same technique that I used over here is going to help with the grasses. So let's watch this technique. I'll try to get the same color that I used. What I'm gonna do is I'm in an awkward position here. I'm going to vary the pressure and I'm gonna do more angled strokes and maybe some twisting. And now I can actually, by some twisting, I can make kind of some thicker blades of grasses too. You see that twisting effect there? And you can do the same thing with the trees. And you see all of a sudden how that just looks so much more artistic. And I'm angling my directions more. 
skipping it along. There's another technique that you can do too that I like. Let me see if I can get a really light one so you can see. It's called rolling. If you have the advantage, this is all in my last video. If you have the advantage of having a round pastel, see how I'm, I'm varying the pressure. You see how I got lighter pressure back there? Um, but if you have a round pastel, you might as well take advantage of, of doing the rolling technique a little bit there, okay? And uh, also too, I find that with grasses, uh, I didn't mean to make this about grasses as well. I find people, including myself, I've gotten better at this. We often spell things out way too much with grasses. Um, let's say in this example down here, we had some grasses down on the ground and the same thing over here. Again, I'm just giving them some ground to rest upon. And um, in the foreground, it's usually darker and the grasses are usually taller in the foreground. But let's say that uh, in this one, let me do it where we're gonna spell out all these really taller grasses here. We've got some grass growing here. And now we've got some gradually, they're going to get smaller and shorter in the distance, a little bit lighter in value. And um, they start changing from horizontal strokes I'm sorry, vertical strokes to horizontal strokes. Let me get it kind of a neutral. And they also get, uh, that's another video I have that is uh, five ways to create depth in your artwork. Things start getting more horizontal and flat in the distance. Okay, but my point about the grasses is that often we spell things out too much. We might have a tendency to draw all these little grasses. See, same pressure, really boring, boring, boring. And then, um, oh, we know these are smaller, so let's make them all smaller because it's in the distance. We got more grasses here, all very patterned and, and boring. So that's way too much information. That's my new uh, phrase I've been using all AI. Don't be a victim of TMI, too much information in your artwork. So I'm gonna come over on this side, I'm gonna show you a little bit of the difference. Um, I'm gonna get a little bit more. Let's say we got some uh, deep grasses right down in here. All right, what we can do is we can just give a hint of some of these grasses here. They don't, we, let's say we got some really, we're down in the grass, our, our eye level is down here. And we've got some, some grasses growing up like this. You might get a few of them that you see. I'm varying the pressure. I'm giving a little bit more angular strokes here. All right, so that is definitely not as spelled out right here. Now we can go and change up um, the background here, uh, getting a little further in the distance. And we can do the same thing. We can just give maybe some hints of some around the tree, vary their direction, vary the pressure, maybe do a little bit of the twisting. And But we can do big, also you could add some things in here that might not be grasses, might be a different plant. And then the same thing in the background. I know I'm working again on just uh, on paper, but um, you can probably get the idea. All right, now that we've talked a little bit about the technique of drawing trees or grasses or things with more of a varying pressure, perhaps a little bit of a twisting and angular direction and technique, let's talk about how to know where trees split and divide. Have you ever done that? Try to draw a tree and you're like, well, where would this branch be? Or where do, if you're doing it from imagination. And a lot of times we might be working from a reference photo where we want to add something. So it's good to know these rules. And so I find it's a lot easier to understand drawing trees the Fibonacci way to do it on a piece of ruled paper the first time. So I'm gonna bring you guys over and I'm gonna work it out and show you how mathematically it works. It's really cool. Here are a few examples of some paintings. I tried to find some that haven't been put in the clear bags yet, where the grasses are hopefully not overworked or over detailed. This one is really all about value and shape and direction. I mean, there's barely any blades of grass. It's mostly very wide strokes in it, and it still gives the illusion of grasses. This one also has grasses that vary in pressure and direction and shape, and you still have the mental impression of, of grasses. Uh, also, this one here hardly has, I par pardon the glare, 
uh, hardly has any grasses even drawn. They're more just like chunky shapes. Once again, still the illusion of grasses. Same here with this one. Um, very little uh, individual strokes of grasses in this. But again, still get that uh, more of the suggestive quality that I think many people like. And, um, you know, that's kind of my goal too. I like to suggest things rather than spell them out. Um, also too, this is one that uh, I recently did out in my parents' field, a plein air painting. I'll have a video on this one as well. But notice too, no individual blades of grasses. Even I got crazy. This one's about uh, dramatic color. Uh, that's what the video will be about. But, um, you know, I just suggested things and I did still very pressure. Sometimes I did twist my pastel a little bit more. So hopefully that helps you a little bit with that. But now let's get to that Fibonacci pattern of how trees grow. All right, a quick little recap on the Fibonacci sequence. And again, I encourage you to watch that video. It has so much interesting information as to... Uh, how it came about, and a little bit of the history into it. But it is a formula that fairly accurately represents how nature behaves. And by nature, it's things from the way tree branches grow, which, which I will demonstrate here, the way flower petals grow. Um, and it, it often has to do with a spiral. If you've seen the Nautilus shell, that's a breakdown mathematically of how the Fibonacci sequence and the golden ratio works. It's in everything. Again, I'm, I'm recapping that video. because It's so, so neat. But um, if you just want to know the numbers, and that's what we'll need to know for this example, the way they work is you, you just start with two numbers. That's the best uh, way to describe how to begin. So rather than starting, most people start the Fibonacci numbers with one, and I always find it's a little confusing. It's easier to me if you start with zero. So what are the first two numbers? Zero and one. Okay, now all we're going to do is add those two numbers together for the next number in the sequence. So that's pretty easy, right? Zero plus one is one. The next number in the sequence, one plus one, is two. The next number would be two plus one. Okay, so uh, you get the idea. We just keep going on and on and on. And, uh, and it goes on forever, all right? So I'll just, I'll go to here. I'll go up to 21. So that's generally how it works. You add the two numbers and you get the next number. Well, the way this pattern is reflected in a tree and its growth, now this is a generality, okay? Every tree does not grow exactly this way, but it's a general rule of thumb and it's gonna help you understand. Um, just like when I was working with the pastel, I didn't focus on it too much because I was talking and teaching, but once you learn this, you can kind of accurately represent the way the tree grows with its branches. So here we go. And you may have to do this a couple of times um, for it to make sense. The way I like to think of it, I'm gonna zoom in even more. We'll start at the bottom here. Is we're going to use these numbers, okay? We're gonna start with the, we can't do zero, right? So we're gonna start with the one and the one. That's gonna be our trunk of our tree. So let's start down here. We're gonna have, I, I would draw a square so you could see, but we're gonna start the trunk. It's gonna start here. I don't wanna start it too wide or I'll run off the paper. So let's start the trunk right here. We filled in one level, okay? So we need to do another one, all right? So let's do, there's the next one, okay? Now, we know the next number in the sequence is two. So we've got to divide this into two on the third level, okay? We've got one, one, and now we've got to break this guy up. So we're just going to put a little V right here at the bottom of this third level. Now also with trees, you may have noticed, usually there is a primary branch and a secondary branch. One is going to be more like the main trunk. So uh, let's make this one more like the main trunk. So I'm actually, and these don't have to all be straight. I'm gonna actually kind of make this one a little thicker, okay? This one's gonna be my secondary branch, all right? So we've got one, one, and one, two. You see that? One trunk, one trunk, two branches, or two divisions of the trunk, all right? Zero would be down here. <laughs> all right, so now we're gonna take one of these guys we're, we alternate, okay? One of them is going to, what's the next number? The next number is three. So let's take this main trunk one and we're gonna split it into two. 
So I'm gonna do a V, a little V, we're splitting it, okay, right here. This one's not gonna get split into two, okay, because we're gonna end up with three over here. So this one will just kind of um, bring over a little bit. So now we're taking this one up and we're splitting it into two. So now guess what we have on this level? One branch, two branch, three branches. <laughs> All right, so the next one is going to have, I'm gonna have to curve my numbers around here. The next one is going to have how many? Let's look back up here. It's going to have five. So what we're gonna do is we already made this one the long one, okay? It didn't get a, a break yet. So this one in the next level, and by the way, this happens differently based on the variety of tree. Live oak trees, have you ever noticed how they go so wide? So let's make this branch like more like a live oak branch. Let's bring it, we're gonna put our V way out here, okay? That's kind of far. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this branch over here like that, and then I'm gonna go like this, like that, okay? And this one here, now we've got two trunks again. One's gonna break into a V and one is not. Let's make this one break into a V since it's a live oak tree way over here. I probably should have held off on my tree variety <laughs> descriptions and um, done it uh, just real simply. Okay, so now we broke that one off. Now this one, we are not going to break it into two. Let's just bring this one up like that, okay? So now what do we have on this next level? One, two, three, four, five. Look at that, isn't that cool? All right, so now let's look again at this one. We've got two, whenever you have two, like a V, one's gonna go into another V and one is not. So let's make this one go into another V, okay? So we're gonna bring it up and let this one won't, okay? So let's bring this one just kind of up here like this, all right? Now, let's, this one is, um, did not get a V before, you see that? So let's give it a V kind of like right here. I'm kind of bending my tree branches probably too much. All right, same thing here. This one, um, we gotta, it's got two, so we gotta choose which one's gonna get the V. I'll take the outside one again. So we're gonna go out here, and this one will not get the V, okay? Now, once again, let's go back over here. This one has two, pick one and give it the V. Let's do this one. The split, I should say. I probably shouldn't call it a V. This one's not gonna get it, okay? We're just gonna go up here. All right, this one did not get a split, so let's give it a split. Let's bring it over here. All right, so we're getting somewhere. This one, what, what's, what's happening here? We've got two, so what do we have to do? We have to pick one. Um, I think I want a tree that's got a big hole in the middle here. So I'm gonna pick this one to have the V over here and this one not to, okay? Over here, we've got, it didn't have a V at all, so let's give it a V and we're gonna just bring it up over here. You can bend them, you know, wherever you put the V, you might have to bend your, your branches to suit that. So once again, I'm kind of making more of a live oak tree. So let's do one, oh, I missed a level. I'm trying to get them all to the level before I move on. This one, what's happening here? We've got a V, we've got two, a split, so we gotta pick one to, um, to have the next V and one to not have the next V. So again, let's pick this one out here. I'm always putting the Vs right at the line too, just so you know. So this one's gonna be reaching out again. Notice too, they're all getting smaller and this one's just gonna reach up. All right, let's do one more level. Okay, so over here, we have one that did not have the V right here. So we gotta give a V and bend it to that V. All right, here we go. This one had a V, so we have to pick one branch and draw a V and the other one won't have it or a split. This one won't have it, okay, we'll bring it up here. This one right here, it's got a V. We're gonna pick one. I'll pick one, I'll do one right here. We'll make it have a V. And this one will not. Uh, this one just has a V because it, it doesn't have two, so we just give it a V. And again, I, I'm bending it. You can bend the branches to wherever the split is. This has two, whoops. <laughs> this one has two. So what do we do? We pick one side or the other to make it go to that split and the other one won't have a split. So I'm gonna pick this side, I'm gonna go to this split and this one, I won't even have a split. 
right here, what do we have? We have two. So one of them's gonna have a split and one of them won't. Let's give a little split here. And this one won't have a split. This one has one. We've gotta give it a split. You don't have a choice, okay? So if it, if it hasn't had a split previously, you just put the split on the next level. This one has two. We gotta pick one that has a split and one that doesn't. I'm gonna do the same thing I've done before. And we'll do this. Now we're kind of running out of room here. Um, but you see how the tree is growing. Now I've seen these Fibonacci trees done before, just growing straight up. People just um, do them kind of, but I think it's interesting that we can pick and choose where we make the splits. Now that, you don't want to have to paint that way all the time, right? You, you really don't want to have to uh, uh, stop and think. But if you practice these and you think about how they work, before you know it, you kind of start to naturally do it. So I'm going to kind of use my side of my pastel, a little bit of my, it's a wide pastel or long pastel. So I don't want to make my tree that wide. So what I'm going to lift up on it a little bit and just press on one side. So there's our base. We know one side's going to kind of split and we're going to split here. Okay. That's going to be my primary side. Okay. Then we know from this split, we're going to have, um, a V going somewhere and one not, okay? So we've got one of them going here in a little V and one of them won't. This one is the long one. It's gonna just do that, okay? Then we just, we kind of keep going. I'm just gonna kind of keep keep doing it from here, okay? Just, so, but then the more you do it, the more you realize you can kind of just get a little creative. Nobody's gonna come in and count your Fibonacci branches, okay? But one thing is true is that if a tree isn't somewhat accurate, it's going to look, your, your art will look amateurish, okay? So the more that you do this, the better you'll get. I hope you found that educational, and I hope it will expand your horizons when it comes to drawing and painting trees. And once again, patrons, this is your homework assignment. You can do these Fibonacci trees and also try to do some that are with some pastel or pencil, whatever, but do the, the pressure technique and give it some gestural quality. Currently available in my Etsy shop is my book that I wrote and illustrated called The Mountain Queen. With the holidays quickly approaching, I thought it might be neat to offer it as a stocking stuffer gift for a child or grandchild in your life, and I call it the eternal love story. It's only $24.99 in my Etsy shop, and it is an autographed copy. You can personalize it, too, when you visit the Etsy shop, if you'd like me to mention anyone's name. So I just wanted to share that, and it might make the perfect Christmas gift. I love it when you guys make comments on these videos and let me know if this is what you like. So please do that. Like this video, comment, subscribe, become a patron if you'd like. It really does help this channel. And as always, happy painting. Thank you.